Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Noob Garage. Last week we concentrated on getting the cam installed, the double roller timing set, and the heads. This week we're going to be working on getting the oil pump installed. We're going to have to do some modifying of the front cover to make it all fit. We're going to be painting the front cover and the valley cover in that black wrinkled paint. And we're finally going to install some direct nitrous on the Holly High Rim. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, so we're back. We're gonna be installing the front cover. Uh, the problem is we have the double roller timing chain on here. And when you go to put the front cover on, you'll notice that it doesn't sit flush. It won't sit flush. Uh, this piece right here, which is where the cam sensor bolt goes to hold the cam sensor in, it protrudes out the side and hits the side of the cam. So you gotta take a Dremel tool and uh, run that down. Clean it up, make sure you don't go too deep because you don't want to protrude into where the screw goes. And then uh, it should fit. But once I get it set for fit, then we're, we're not gonna really install it. At this point, we're gonna be painting it uh, to match the valve covers and the valley cover. So we'll get it all set so you can see the, the grinding process. All right, so we got it all cleaned up. You can see right there, shaved it down. It's nice and smooth. Nice gap there. Didn't go all the way down to the threads. Um, just remember, this doesn't have to be torqued that much. So it's not like you have to, uh, you have to have a lot of meat there for that screw to, to screw into. It's not, it's not like holding pressure or anything there, so. Perfect. You can see there's lots of room for the chain to move in there. It's not like right up against the chain. So that's good. So what we're gonna do is uh, we'll pull this off, tape it all up, get it ready for paint. All right, so we got it all covered up. That's the back side, front side, all taped up, ready to go. All right, so uh, before I tape it all up, get it ready for paint, I'll go ahead and show you the uh, the valley cover. So we're moving the knock sensors from the middle of the valley and we're going to put them on the side. So we're deleting uh, the old valley cover, which is this. This is the old valley cover and it's got the uh, entry holes for the knock sensors to sit in there. And it sits like that and it's flat. Well, since we're taking those out, we don't need these big holes collecting dirt and dust and water and everything else. So we'll take that off. I went through ICT and I got their aluminum plate. It's really nice. Super thick. Fits right on there. You know, with the gasket. And then it comes with the um, recessed hardware. Looks just as good as the pan. Run that in nice and flat all the way across. We're also re replacing or re uh, rerouting, I guess, the cam sensor that used to sit back here. Let's see if I move this a little closer. It used to sit back here. Uh, we're, we're putting it on the front cover for now. And ICT also has the, a cover kit for that. All right, so we're going to be spraying the uh, front cover, valve covers, and uh, valley pan. But we're going to wait for a little bit on the rest of that. We're just going to get this front cover knocked out so you can see the process of it. I'm going to be using the uh, VHC Wrinkle Plus paint, uh, all black. Uh, it's good for 350 degrees. It should be pretty easy to install. Uh, you shake it up for a minute after you hear the ball moving. You spray one pattern uh, horizontal, one pattern um, vertical and the one pattern at an angle and uh, you let five minutes in between each coat and then you wait 24 hours for it to dry and 48 hours for it to be uh, completely cured. Uh, if you wanted to rush the cure you can put it in an oven at 200 degrees for an hour uh, but your wrinkles will be a little tighter.
All right, so we're gonna use my uh, my wife's hair dryer and uh, cook this thing. So it's gonna get loud, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So, there you go. I think it looks pretty damn good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the, uh, the ICT cam um, position sensor plug. Uh, it's the aluminum plug, aluminum hold down, nice hardware to match. Uh, comes with an O-ring, you just give it a quick spray of lube. And then you wanna drop it in, give it a push. Pops right in place. You'll notice on the hold down, there's a groove on this side and it's flat on that side. You want the flat side up. The bottom edge of this sits in this groove and it allows this, to, this part to sit completely flush against the block. If you go the opposite way, as you can see, it won't fit. So slide that in. And this is a half inch bolt. Just give it a little, you don't need a, over, uh, over torque it, it's not holding a ton of pressure. Uh, it's just holding this aluminum plate, so you should be good. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and install our valley cover um, from ICT. We painted it black last time, and uh, I think it came out really, really well. Put a new gasket down, cover. So we're going to go to 18 foot-pounds. All right, valley pan installed. All right, guys. So we got a couple of issues we're going to note. Um, whenever you're using the double roller timing set, you have to know that it's going to push your oil pump out. When you put your oil pump on, you're going to have to use the spacers, which you see right here, little aluminum spacers. These spacers come with the melling kit, which is the uh, 10.296 melling pump. Now, the issue with that is once this gets pushed out, then this gets pushed out, and then it gets pushed into the front cover, and you can't mount the front cover. So you have to do some grinding. So we already ground this down so it doesn't hit the chain. Uh, and then the support beams that are on this pump were hitting. So you can see I ground down right here. I ground down right here. I ground down on the other side, just like this side, but over here. And then where the pickup tube goes, the edge, just a little bit on the edge, I had to trim down. And then on the front cover, I had to trim down a little bit right here, and then a little bit right here, and then around the edge. And that got it to where I'm able to sit it on there flat, okay? So just know that if you're gonna go with the double roller, and you're gonna go with this mailing pump, then you're gonna have issues with clearance, and you're gonna have to clearance those out, okay? It's not a big deal as long as you have a Dremel tool and a little bit of time. Shave off a little bit, put it on. Shave off a little bit, put it on. Uh, continue to see where it's hitting, pull it off, and then you're good. 
once you get this set so it's completely on and it's flush and it's able to sit down flush then you can install your pump for good you have to center your pump so when i installed this pump my sd card wasn't working for some reason i had to go buy another one so i'm not going to pull it back out i'm just going to tell you how to do it but what you do is you take these seven bolts out and there's an outer rotor and an inner rotor on this pump you pull both of those out you put your pump on here with these bolts but loose so the pump is able to move the body is able to move you take your inner rotor and you slide your inner rotor on and then you take a two to three thousandths feeler gauge three of them small ones and you stick it up between the snout and the gear all the way around one two three once that's in there then you take your outer rotor and you stick you grease it up and you stick your outer rotor in there and you do the same thing but you put the two to three thousandths feeler gauges around the outside from the rotor to the outer housing of the pump one two three or however you want to do it as long as they're equal around it once those are centered then you can torque these down okay these go to 18 foot pounds once these are down to 18 foot pounds then you can put your cover back on put your bolts back in these go to 106 inch pounds 106 inch pounds once that's all done then you can start throwing everything back together just so you know there are companies out there that do have the double roller uh, timing set and the oil pump and it's uh, already spaced for the double roller so you won't have to touch your front cover you can just throw it all on there as one piece and you should be good to go so we're just on there to cover everything up make sure it's not getting a bunch of dirt in there all the time uh, at nighttime we cover it up with a plastic bag anyway but uh, just while i'm working on other stuff okay so at this point we're waiting on some parts to come in to complete the rest of the motor uh, but I did get the Holly High Ram in, so we're going to start working on that, uh, mounting the nitrous system, mocking it up, and figuring out where I'm going to be putting the jets, uh, so or the nozzles. So here it is on top of the motor, and we have the nitrous rail on top of that, and we ran the soft lines down to the intake area, so I can try to see where I want to put my nozzles. I did end up getting some uh, video of me drilling and tapping the holes to put the nozzles in but most of the time my shoulder was in the way so I got a couple of clips that I'm going to cut down and see if I can squeeze so the, the drilling itself is completely covered by my shoulder but the tapping and the marking and everything is it should be there so we will show you a little video of that and then we're going to talk about uh, a couple of the issues we're having with the brackets and uh, how we're going to go ahead and fix that. Alright so when you get ready to drill these holes you want to use a centering punch and uh, that's going to put a little divot inside the aluminum or the metal and it'll keep your drill bit from walking around. This is a rounded edge so you definitely want to use something like that. Uh, this one's a spring-loaded centering punch and that'll keep your, your drill bit from walking around. So you want to start off with a small drill bit uh, and then work your way up. So I, I drilled the hole with a small one but my shoulder was in the way so here's the medium one. Uh, and this one goes through much easier than the first one so I just let it play through my shoulder. And then uh, you switch that out to the, the last one, which is a 2164. It calls for an R bit, but we didn't have an R bit. And the closest one to that, to an R bit, was a 2164 bit. So we ran that through. And then we're using a 8th by 27 NPT tap. And you want to make sure you keep it nice and straight as you're going in. You don't want to, the, the first couple of threads are the most important because that's going to line up the rest of the threads. So you run it down. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see my thumb click the reverse on that ratchet. Just to, you want to go backwards to try to get all the metal shavings out of the way. And then you can just click it right back forward and keep going. Uh, it's good to, to spray a little oil in there to keep it cool and to help move the, the metal flakes out of the way. But every time I did it, it just kept the, the metal flakes gunked up in there. So I stopped spraying it after like the third nozzle I installed. So you take it down, you reverse it. Uh, you break the chips off and then uh, you keep going. You normally keep it four to six threads uh, from all the way being being inserted all the way in. And then um, at the last point, I'll bring it out a little bit and then run it back down all the way to the stop. And then I'll bring it all the way back out. And then once it gets out, just make sure 
you blow the shavings out of it. And then you can go ahead and enter or insert your nozzle. Now screw it down. You want to make sure the jet hole is facing down and it's lined up with the, the intake runner. And now we'll go ahead and talk about some brackets that we're, we're having an issue with. Okay, so we have the Nitrous Express uh, direct port kit installed. It's the uh, 8009-10 uh, kit. Um, it's a direct port with the soft lines. So it makes it easier to change out the jets if I needed to. Uh, I don't see a lot of jet swapping going on. Uh, maybe just in the beginning to set everything up to see what's, uh, what's a good shot. But for the most part, it's probably going to just stay the same. Uh, once I get it all tuned for it, I'm not going to be doing a lot of swapping. So... Anyway, the kit looks really nice. Um, the blue, I was going to paint it black, but I think I'm just going to leave it blue for a while. Uh, it's not really bothering that much, and it gives a little contrast, so it's not overkill of black. Um, but it seems to be working all right. Uh, the lines fit nice. The nozzles are already in. Um, I drill and tap the nozzles. These nozzles are just test fitted right now. Um, I still have to put the liquid uh, thread sealer on it. So I'll pull those out, put those back, put the thread sealer on it, and then stick them back in and aim them exactly which way I want them to be aimed uh, out of the, the intake. <clears throat> My issue right now is brackets to hold the rails. So the rails are just sitting here. They're not, they're not held in place by anything, and obviously you can't let it run like that. Um, Nitrous Express doesn't have anything to hold these in. Nitrous Outlet responded to, to one of my posts, and they, they showed me a couple of brackets that they made for another customer that were custom made and they're gorgeous they're black um, they're fit to this fuel rail this perfect size fuel rail they're fit to it so you just throw them on there and and they're perfect the problem with it is they're 75 bucks a piece and i need four of them so do i have 300 dollars for brackets i don't so what i'm going to end up doing is using uh making my own brackets they're not going to be as pretty but they're going to be way cheaper and I can put that money into something else. So I was thinking maybe some uh, hose clamps with the, the rubber bushing on them and get some longer bolts for the intake so I can run the clap, clamp around this side. It'll be flat at the top and then run a longer bolt. I might not even need a longer bolt because these bolts are pretty, pretty long as they are. And then I can uh, put one here, one here, and it'll bolt up just like that. So that'll be a perfect height. It'll get it away from it from the intake itself. Um, it'll be insulated with the rubber brackets, and you know it'll cost me three dollars instead of three hundred dollars. Like I said, it won't look that good, but the, the, you know the engine bays are always cluttered with crap, so you, you're not even going to notice that. Um, the intake itself is a is a cool factor, a wow factor, and then having the nitrous there, it's another wow factor. You could have gone with, or I could have gone with the. A separate system that would allow it just to put a plate in the front by the throttle body um, but I always feel like if you pop the hood of a car and it looks like this I mean it looks amazing to me so I really like the way it came out There's still some stuff I need to finish up on it um, I still have to bolt the fuel rails in they're just sitting there for mock-up but it's coming along a couple more things Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't checked out the first couple of episodes of this build, go to my channel and take a look. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them ASAP. And I'll see you next time.